Hello and welcome to this week's Medical Minute. The last couple of weeks we've been talking about respiratory distress in both dogs and cats. And today I want to talk to you about one of the most important life-saving procedures that we as veterinarians can perform in certain patients with respiratory distress, and that's thoracocentesis. People that don't perform thoracocentesis regularly tend to get freaked out by the thought of taking a needle, plunging it into a pet's chest, uh, missing the heart, missing the lungs, and uh, extracting fluid or air. But it's actually a really safe procedure. To be honest, I have seen more animals killed by a, a cystocentesis gone bad than I have a thoracocentesis gone bad. And I know that everyone's pretty comfortable with the cystocentesis. As an emergency clinician, one of the things that drives me batty is that people are afraid to do thoracocentesis and as a result, transfer unstable animals when all they had to do was do a simple, straightforward um, thoracocentesis and the animal would have been much more stable for its transfer to our hospital for um, further diagnostics and treatment. So the take home message from today is gonna be, don't be afraid, it's simple and it's safe. So when you go to do a thoracocentesis, you're going to have to put together some sort of a thoracocentesis set. Generally, it's going to be a syringe, and I like smaller syringes, 12 mils, um, maybe for a big dog, 20 mils, but nothing bigger than that. They're just too hard to handle with your hands. Generally, a three-way stopcock, and then if a, for a very small dog or a small cat, a butterfly, Make it at least a 21 gauge. Don't go anything smaller than that, but even think about using a 19 gauge or um, a needle. And the needle, generally an inch is enough for a big cat or a smaller medium-sized dog. You may have to go to an inch and a half needle for a large dog. You're then going to clip and prep an area um, where you think you're most likely to find fluid um, ventrally, or if you're looking for air, you're going to be dorsally. Uh, for fluid, I like to go about the 8th to 10th inter um, in, um, intercostal space uh, and about the 11th, 10th uh, to 11th space for air dorsally. Uh, for fluid, I'm going to go right at the costochondral junction. I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to insert it perpendicular to the chest wall. Even if you hit lung, lung's going to seal. It's going to be okay. If you hit the heart, you'll feel it and you'll back out. It's going to be okay. And once you insert your needle directly in, you're going to aspirate back, or if it's easier, have somebody else handle the syringe while you handle the needle. They're going to aspirate back and try and get fluid or air. If initially you don't get fluid or air, make sure that your needle isn't too um, short or try repositioning a little bit. If you have ultrasound available, that's certainly going to be a handy tool, but in animals with a life-threatening amount of pleural effusion, it's usually not that hard to find the fluid. Don't worry initially about draining them completely. Just get enough fluid out of there that they're breathing more comfortably, that they're more stable, and that you can begin treatment. Um, one other thing to remember about pleural effusion is that Lasix tends not to get rid of it, even if it's being caused by heart failure. It has to be taken out, and then the Lasix will prevent more fluid from accumulating. So even in a heart failure patient where you've diagnosed them, you started them on treatment, many times they still require um, a, a thoracocentesis in order, to, uh, in order to be able to breathe more comfortably. So don't be afraid of doing a thoracocentesis. There's a very, very small chance that anything can go wrong. It's a very safe procedure and definitely a life-saving one. That'll do it for today's Medical Minute, and we'll see you again next week.